tragic don'ts leave the auditorium and the Lord is finished ministering, ministering to this morning. Amen. Those at home, amen, don't switch your phone off. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Stay plugged in. Every now and then, the Lord gives us a key to the Word. Deep revelation. It doesn't come every day. But every now and then, the Lord gives you something that's far beyond your wildest imagination. It's far beyond your wildest dreams. And when I started this week, my preparation of my word is tomorrow is too late. That's what I started preparing. Amen. And this morning I sat down and the Lord said, I don't want you to speak on that. I got something special this morning for my children. So I said to you, early on you are here. Amen. Because the Lord God Almighty wants you to be here. Amen. He wants you to receive your deliverance, to receive your healing, to receive your transformation. So I want you to pay attention this morning. Very important. Pay attention. Write down. Take notes. Do whatever the Lord's telling you to do. But pay attention. Listen, the word of God says that the word of is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So some of you might sit here and the enemy might be tugging on your left, might be tugging on your right. You might start lying to yourself. You must, might start painting a picture that is not a godly picture. And when I want you to remember the declaration that you made. And when the Lord God comes, He serves thoughts and intents of the heart. And then today it's about the day of freedom in the world. And it's about coming into freedom in Jesus' name. So I want to pick up I mean, from 1 Corinthians 10, 18 to 20. Matthew 4, 5 to 7, Psalms 91, 11 to 12, 1 Samuel 15, 9, 5, 15, 19 to 24, and Exodus 17, 11 to 13, 1 Chronicles 10, 13 to 14, and we'll see how we go. So I'm going to read it again. 1 Corinthians 10, 18 to 23, Matthew 4, 5 to 7, Psalms 91, 11 to 12, 1 Samuel 15, 19 to 24, Exodus 17, 11 to 13, and 1 Chronicles 10, 13 to 14. This morning, church, every scripture I've given you is of the most, most importance in this teaching. I mean, I'm not going to preach you, I'm going to teach you something today. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I just want you to just be open to what the Lord's going to say. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians, Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 10, 18 to 20, and he says this. He says, that, Observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What am I saying then? That an idol is anything, or what is an offering to idols is anything? Rather, that the things, I mean, which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons, not to God. I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and fellowship with demons. Wow. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? Amen. I'm going to read it one more time. I mean, you know, we spend so much time in the Bible, and I want to say this to everyone here. Every now and then, the Father gives you something that you've read 150 times, but you've never had the revelation of what the Lord is saying. Observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat the sac- of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What am I saying then? That an idol is anything, or what is an offering to idols is anything. Rather than the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with the demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, amen, and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? You mean this morning I felt the Lord saying to me, How many of us are provoking the Lord because we are partaking and sacrifices with demons? We are partaking with fellowship with demons. And Paul writes to the Corinthians says, Listen, this is what you are doing. Are you stronger than He? Are you greater than God? Amen. That you can provoke Him to jealousy, that you may bring a defilement before the Lord God Almighty, provoking Him to anger. Amen. That will partake, amen, bring in the cup and defiling the cup of God, bring in the cup of God before the Lord and defiling it in, in front of His face, amen, because you are bringing it before demons, you are, you are partaking of things of demons, amen, and you are bringing it as an abomination to God. So Paul writes it to the Corinthians and he knows that the Corinthians have been in and out of Christianity, but they haven't left 
so they passed behind. Some of them were still going back and forth, and they were still doing some stuff that was not pleasing to God. So he writes to them and he says, listen, this is what you are doing, and you, you should not do this. And, then I, I, and I love what Paul says, he, he says this to them, what am I saying? That an idol is anything or always offering idols, rather that the things which Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice them to demons and not God. And I do not want to have fellowship with demons. I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. Paul's writing to the Corinthians, he's writing to the church as an apostle. An apostle is a man of God that plants churches and man takes care of the churches that has been planted. He's always going around and speaking a word of encouragement. So if he writes a word and he says, listen, I don't want you to have fellowship with demons. But hang on, I'm going to tell you why I feel you're having fellowship with demons. I mean, because you're partaking of the cup of the Gentiles. You're partaking of the things of this world and, 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 you're, and you're transgressing against God because you serve a jealous God and you are carrying on like you are stronger than He. And many of you are going through trial and tribulation. You're going through some stuff and the Lord is saying He wants to deliver us this morning. And the title of my message, and I want you to write it down because you're going to say when we get to the end, is stop prostituting yourself. Amen. Stop prostituting yourself. Amen. Stop prost. You might gonna, when we get to the end, the Lord is giving me such a revelation this morning. That when I said this morning, we woke up this morning, and then we were just sensed the attack of the enemy. And I and I and I wasn't sure. I said, Lord, what is going on? I know when there's something like this happening, there's something great that you are doing. Amen. And we started to pray. And then we just sat in bed and we started to pray. And we said, This is not gonna happen. And this is not gonna be the portion. We know the word of God, and then we are not waiting to step into the water for healing. Amen. We are the angels that stir up the water for his name's sake, for his kingdom come. Amen. And I want to speak this into your lives. Now I'm going to take you a bit back. I mean, now maybe we Matthew 4, 5 to 7. The enemy shows up to Jesus. Amen. He shows up to Jesus. He comes and he approaches Jesus. Jesus has just been just come out of out of fasting. He just come up spending time with the Lord. And he just comes out. And as he comes out, the enemy meets him. And he meets him and comes straight up against him. And the enemy starts to speak the word of God. He starts to speak the word. And as he speaks the word, Jesus speaks back the word. And Jesus reconfirms, amen, that he knows the word, but not only does he know the word, but he believes the word, amen. And he speaks this and he carries on having this attack, amen, but Jesus knows how to handle himself. And I want to pick up that the devil took, took him up into the holy city. He set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And then he shall give his angels charge over you. And then and then he says, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to me, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then the enemy shows up to attack him. And I felt the Lord say, many of us are still getting attacked by the enemy. And then some of us are getting attacked by the enemy, about by, by pagan worship, getting attacked by the things of the past, getting attacked by sorcery worship, getting attacked by ancestral worship. We've given our heart to the Lord. But we keep on going back to the things of the past because we haven't been delivered from them. Amen. Yeah, Jesus Christ is standing there and the enemy is coming to attack him. And I want to give you this. Amen. And the enemy, as he comes to attack him, he speaks the word. And as he speaks the word, the Lord Jesus Christ reiterates and speaks the word back in him. But the Lord Jesus Christ speaks the word. Not only speaks it, amen. He speaks it with the authority and the anointing that God had placed upon him. Amen. Number two, when Jesus speaks the word, he realizes, amen, that the enemy has come to rob, steal, and destroy. And Jesus Christ knew that there was a ministry upon him. He knew his calling and he knew what he was supposed to come and do. And because he knew what he was supposed to come and do, he reiterated and said, you shall not take the Lord your God. Because he was sent by God, he was commissioned by God, and he was about to do God's business. And when he said, you shall not attempt the Lord your God, I'll speak the word back to you, he says, but I want to give you key. Because many of us are in churches, many of us, I hope you're at home, I want you to take note. Many of us are in churches and we are prostituting ourselves to the enemy. And that's what, they, what Paul writes to the he says, listen, when you're partaking with them, you're partaking with demons. You are, inter you are interacting with the things of God and you are interacting with the things of demons and you don't realize that we have a jealous God. He's a jealous God. Amen. And he's not only jealous. When you are partaking with the enemy, you are telling God that you are stronger than him. Amen. Many of us are under attack and we don't know why we are under attack. Because we are trying to take the word of God and mix it with the things that are not of God. Listen to this. I want to give you this quickly. 
In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. One of the scriptures he reads in that scripture, he reads full. The scripture before it says, He shall give his angels charge over you. So he speaks the word, and the word of God in Revelation says, Do not add or subtract to my word. Why won't they do he that adds or subtracts to my word? The enemy is already an abomination to God. I mean, he's already been kicked out of heaven, so he doesn't mind adding or subtracting. Listen to this. He says this. I mean, if for it is written, he shall give his angels charge of you. Psalm 91, 11, 12, where this word has been driven from, read as follows. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. He leaves it out where the Lord God says in Psalms to keep you in all your ways. And once he keeps you in all your ways, he carries on and leads. In their hands they shall bear you up. Listen, lest you dash your foot against the stone. The enemy doesn't lie to Jesus. He's swept, flipped the switch. And as he flips the switch, if Jesus dashes his foot against the stone, I mean, the angels won't catch him because the word of God says, lest you, you, you dash your foot against the stone. But he takes the word of God and he manipulates it. Many of you have been manipulated by the word of God. Are you with the Lord say to me this morning? Many of you have been manipulated by the word of God. Many of you have gone and seek things that are not of God. And the Lord says you've been manipulated by the enemy. And there's an open door in your life. And I'm going to get you the open door. The Lord wants to deliver us. Don't get serious with me. Get excited for what the Lord wants to do. There's something special that the Lord wants to do this morning. So you are a special people. You are a chosen generation. You've been set aside for the time and a plan like this. You are not here by, by might, amen, or nor by your power, but you are here by God's might and by God's power. He's brought you here for a reason, a purpose, and a plan. And so the enemy says to him, he shall give his angels charge over you, but he keeps it out that he says to keep you in all your ways. I mean, that your ways may be godly ways, I mean, and, he, and he comes and he attacks the enemy. And one of the things that I want to give you this morning, I mean, how many of you have been confused or are still confused, I mean, or are still getting confused by the word of God, by leaving something out of the word or, or running off the people that cannot give you the full teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ? How many of us are still seeking pagan worship? We are looking people for suicides, modern age, I mean, modern age uh, uh, Christianity, where it's not Christianity, it's been tippled with modern age. I mean, where it's ancestral worship, where we're going and we're mixing ancestral worship with the word, and we're taking the word of God, and we're intertwining it with the things that is not of God, and then we are saying it is fine because it's part of the word. And Paul says, hang on, it's not part of the word because you are entertaining demons. You don't come and tell me because you've added a bit of the word that God has washed and sanctified it. No. I mean, the enemy came to take Jesus out. He says to me, puts him on a pinnacle. And he says, I'll give you all of this. I mean, Jesus does not flip the switch. He stays focused on the word. He speaks the word. He understands the word. And he understands what is happening. Many of us don't understand what's happening because we think if you add a little bit of this and you add a little bit of that, it's okay. His grace is sufficient. And the word, the example of this word, one of the amazing things is that peace that he leaves out. Amen. That he keep you in all of your ways. For he shall give his angels charge over you. And what is his angels going to do? They're going to keep you in your ways. They're going to keep your path directed to God. They're going to keep you focused on God. They're going to keep you doing the things that God has called you to do. Who are the angels of God? The men and women of God are the angels of God. And he gives charge over those angels to speak the truth of God into your life. Another thing that I want to speak to you about today, that many people are, are, are coming this, this day and are falling by the wayside. I mean, many, many people are falling by the wayside and, they, and they're getting caught up in nonsense. I mean, they're getting caught up in things that are not of God. I mean, it's because they are listening, I mean, to the wrong things. I want to tell you this, when you find a true man of God, a true woman of God, when they start speaking into your life, you start feeling convicted, you run from the word instead of to the word. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Do you know how many times I've been ministered to and you sit there and you feel like, I just want to run away. Come on, is any, can anybody be honest with me? You feel uneasy, you feel uncomfortable, you start telling yourself, this person is talking nonsense and the Lord is holding you bound because there's, the Lord is doing something in your life. Amen. He sets angels charge over us, amen, that He may keep us in our ways. I often say to the two people, the greatest move of God, amen, in your life has been the hands and feet of Jesus. 
Because he wants you to be the hands and feet. He wants you to do what he's called you to do. I mean, and I want to go a little bit deeper because now I've touched on the basics. I mean, I've touched on the basics. And one of the things I just want to say to you, when the devil came to attack Jesus, I mean, the, and the devil came against Jesus, I mean, but I want to say that many of us don't wait for the attack. We are sleeping with the enemy. We are going into the enemy's cave, but we are prostituting ourselves with the enemy. I mean, some of us think we can we can go into places that are not of God. I mean, and it's okay because I'm going to go to church on Sunday. And the Lord is saying, you're prostituting yourselves. You're sleeping with the enemy. I mean, you're an abomination. You stink in my nostrils. I am a jealous God. I mean, and I am jealous. And do you actually think that you're stronger than me? That you can go into pagan worship? That you can get into ancestral worship? That you can go into witchcraft? That you can go into things that are not of God this morning? Do you actually think you can do this? Amen. And it will be okay with you? Do you actually think I'm going to release a blessing over your life? Amen. Because you're prostituting yourself. You're sleeping with the enemy. And the word prostitution is important. And I'm going to get there later because I'm not only speaking and giving you a title on my own thought or my own imagination or my own pattern. But the Lord gave me the, the word prostitution. I mean, it's key to our teaching today. 1 Samuel 15, 19 to 24. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Now, now Samuel is speaking to Saul. And I'm not going to go and spend, I, don't, I can't give you all the scriptures. It will just be too many scriptures. Now, God has chosen Saul to be king. And the, and the Lord God says to, 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 to Samuel, tell, tell him I want him to go out there. And I want him to wipe out the Amalekites. I want him to take them out. And then he must wipe everything out. He must leave nothing alive. He must take out the children. He must take out the mothers, the fathers. He must take out the animals. Anything that is alive must die. Many of us have learned that we've received many, many teachings on this. And many of us don't understand why would God wipe out our nation. I told you today the Lord has given me many revelations. I mean, why would the Lord come and wipe our children? Why are you taking our children? We serve a good, good God. He's a good, good father. I mean, he loves us incredibly. He loves us so much that he, that he sends Jesus Christ and we may be saved. So why would our good, good father take out their Amalekites? But not only take them out, but he takes out their children. I mean, he takes out their children. He makes sure that their children and their children's children, they needed to go. He wanted everything to go. He wanted it so badly to go that when Saul messes up, he sends Samuel. And he said, I want you to go and tell Saul, he's not the king I want him anymore. He's not going, I'm going to choose myself, somebody else. A man that is after my own heart. And then you might ask yourself, but hang on, David got it wrong too. I mean, he was there looking at Bethsaida and he got it wrong. I mean, he got it wrong. He did something that he shouldn't have done. So why is David better than Saul? Why did God have more favor on David? And he sends David to, to David and says, you do that man. You, you still my king. You still up to my own heart. But you know what? You need to repent, David. You need to come to repentance. You need to know these are the things that you've done. Amen. And they're not pleasing on me. But he never takes him out. He never says to him, I don't want you as king. He allows him to run full term. And only, only allow him to run full term. He uses him to prepare the needs for the temple. He doesn't only use it to prepare the needs of the temple. Amen. But he also, amen, lets his son, amen, King Solomon, do what needs to be done, amen, to build the temple. But why? Don't you, have you never asked yourself why, church? Have you never stopped and asked yourself, this is important. If you've already known, this is the most important key that you're going to have today. There's a reason, amen, there's a reason, and I want to point out this reason, because you might think, amen, that entertaining demons is okay. You might think, they're doing the things that is an abomination to God because you don't see what's happening in the natural as okay. But I'm here to tell you today that it ain't okay. That it's walking a very fine line and it is an abomination to God. So I'm going to pick up from 1 Samuel 15, 9 to 24. If you're at home, I don't want you to get off this part. I don't want you to get off your TV or wherever you're watching us. Wherever you're at, you stay tuned in until the end. The Lord wants to deliver us. He wants to heal us and He wants to set us free this morning in Jesus' name. One of the things I want to say this again before I move on. Many of you are drawn back to pagan worship. And you don't understand why. Come on, am I speaking to anybody here today? You're going to show me your hands. I don't care what people think. How many of you are still getting drawn back to ancestral worship? You're a Christian. You tell someone, Lord, I don't want to do that. But it's almost like you're slipping backwards. You're slipping backwards. And you don't know why. Because you keep on telling yourself, I'm not going to do that again. And you keep on falling back into the same, the same temptation. You keep on prostituting yourself to the things that you know is not for you anymore. Amen. 
But the Lord's going to answer us this morning. Amen. So Samuel, hey, 1 Samuel 59 to 24, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, the king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took the plunder and then took off the, of the plunder, the sheep, the oxen, the best things which should, which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. I want to ask you, how many of you are sitting and saying, that's not me? Come on, you're sitting and saying, no, no, that's not me, that's not me, I've never done that all, uh, but the Lord, I've, I've asked for forgiveness, you know, that, that's not me. I mean, Samuel, he says, Saul does the same, he says, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I've gone on this mission on which the Lord sent me, I brought back I got king of Amalek, I've utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the blood, the sheep and oxen, the best of the things, I mean, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in God. But I didn't do that. The people did that. I'm just the king. You know what I mean? I'm just the king. He's saying to Sarah. Amen. Amen. Not realizing that he's messed up. And then Samuel says this to him. He says, has the Lord, sorry, has the Lord as great delight in birth offerings? Has the Lord got great delight in birth offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than, listen to this, sacrifice. And to heed than the fact of rams. For a rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Right? He says, and stubbornness is an iniquity. Amen? And it's an idolatry. I said, stop prostituting yourself. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Listen to this. Then Saul realizes, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The people didn't get it wrong. Actually, I got it wrong because I'm the king. I call the shots here. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. The question still remains. I mean, you just let the cup off, let you a little bit of a spoil of the name. I mean, we serve a forgiving God. I mean, we serve a God that loves us. Come on. Am I speaking to anybody today? Yeah. We're serving a God that loves us. He cares for us. He wants the best for me and you. This is deep stuff we're speaking about. This stuff, I mean, people don't talk about in churches. So I want you to know the Lord wants to deliver you this morning. Amen. And you've got to be excited for that. Because I love it when the Lord wants to deliver us. Because it means, I mean, we are His special people. We are a treasure of God. He wants to set us free. I mean, He doesn't want to take us out like He took our soul. But He wants us to choose today our freedom. I mean, He wants us to make a couple of declarations today. So, my question to the Lord was, but Lord, why? Why do you have to take out the kids? Why do you have to take out? I mean, have you ever asked yourself this question? Come on. Men of God, pastors, all of us, we've asked the question, Lord, why? Why did everything have to die? Why did everything have to be taken out? I want, I want to give this to you quickly. What do Amalekites represent in the Bible? I want you to get this. According to Midrash, the Amalekites were sorcerers who could transform themselves to resemble animals Woo! in order to avoid capture. Thus, in 1 Samuel 15, it was considered necessary to destroy the livestock, I mean, to destroy the Amalek, to destroy the kids, to destroy everything that was attached to them like had to be destroyed because they would transcend in themselves and become like animals. Come on, is that not essential? Have we not seen somebody turn into a snake? It's like Pastor Stanley, have we not seen you on a mission field? Them slithering on the floor like snakes, others acting like cats. Do you know what we are talking about here, church? We understand we are going with this word. So the Lord says to so I want you to wipe them all out because they can transform themselves into different creatures. They can be a cow, they can be a dog, they can be a snake. So I want you to wipe out everything that's living. I mean, because they can change themselves. They can disfigure themselves. We never knew that. Many people don't know that. Many people don't understand. That's why the Lord said, I want you to wipe everything out. Then nothing must be alive because if anything is alive, I mean, you have given it dominion. It has still got something in it. And then it will bring an abomination unto God. So the Amalekites represent, amen, what does it represent? Ancestral worship, demonic, sorcery, all those things that are not of God, that's in the enemy's camp, that's what it represents. I want you to ask you, do you know what was the greatest war that Moses fought? Come on. 
The Amorites. That was the greatest, one of the greatest wars he fought. And I want, I want to give you this Exodus 7, 11, 13. You need to understand what I'm touching on this morning. I mean, I want you to understand why the Lord God Almighty says to Saul, I want you to wipe everything out. And because you didn't wipe it out, I'm wiping you out. I don't need you as a king. You didn't do what I told you to do. Listen, sometimes the Lord's telling us to do something. He's not telling us why we need to do it. He's just telling you, I want you to do it. We don't need an explanation because when God has spoken and He's sealed, I mean, He knows why He's telling us to do it exactly. He wants us to do it. Why and why not belongs to God, not unto us. Listen to this. I want to pick this up quickly. Exodus 17, 11, 13. And so it was, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalite, the hand of Amalites prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron the Hur and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated the Amalites and his people with the edge of the sword. Do you know why he needed to hold up the rod? Do you know why he needed to hold up his hands? Why do we hold up our hands today? To worship. So he was worshiping God because they weren't only in a natural battle, but they were in a supernatural battle. It was one of the greatest fights that Moses had. Every time he dropped his hands, they started getting defeated. Why were they getting defeated? Because they needed to worship God, and God was fighting the battle on their behalf, and they needed to know that the only way they could bring down demons was through the power of God. So every time his hands dropped, they lifted up his hands so he could defeat the enemy. And the enemy was the Amalekites. And why? Because they could, turn, they could transform themselves into different things. They could attack them from the back. You know, in Exodus they attacked Moses from the back. Why? They couldn't attack them because they could transfigure themselves. Amen? Come on. How many of you have been in, in Hope Lanes and you've seen the transfiguration? How many of you have been in worship and you've seen the transfiguration? How many of us have seen these transfigurations? Yet, we prostitute ourselves to demons. And we carry on like we've been saved and set free. And the Lord saying, you are prostituting yourself. You've become one with the enemy. And if you become one with the enemy, you cannot be one with me. Choose this day whom you shall serve. Choose, the Lord is saying, whom shall you serve? So the Lord Wipes them out and get to know me. He says this in Deuteronomy. He says in Deuteronomy 25 to 9. Therefore, I mean, it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around you in the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess an inheritance that you will blot out the remembrance of the Amalites from under heaven. But you shall not forget, he says. So what is he saying? For, I don't want you to remember the nonsense, but I want you never to forget what they are capable of doing. Amen. But the problem with us is not that we, we, we forget what the capabilities are. We are partaking with the things that they still used to do. The Amalekites was an abomination to God. It was an abomination to Moses. It was an abomination to Jesus Christ. I mean, because the Amalekites is the enemy's army. It's Satan's army. Trans, trans, what, what do they call it? I just want to get to it quickly. It's, it's medium. It's idolatry. I mean, it's witchcraft. It's new age. It's an ancestral worship. It's astral terrestrial projection. I mean, it's blood covenants. I mean, it's sangomas. It's all the things that is not of God. It's demonic. So let me tell you that you are partaking of ancestral worship. You are partaking of demons. Yes, amen. Let me give you a story. Amen. And I'm not going to name names. But I knew a family. Loved Christianity. Loved the things of God. Walked with God. Amen. Loved God. Amen. Ministered to people. Encouraged people. Amen. Lost one child. Lost one child decided. They want to know why they lost the one child. Never made peace with God. Never let the peace of God overwhelm them. Never let, let the joy of the Lord be upon them. Never embrace the fact that there's a season and a time for life. And the joy must be that my child is going to be with the Lord if I brought him up in godly ways. So he decided, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll go find pagan worship. I know about pagan worship. The Bible speaks about it. I know about the, the spiritual worship. I know about sorcery. And I know I can go speak to people that can tell me, I mean, about things. So this person decides, well, they're going to go see one of these uh, fortune tellers. And they're going to see this fortune teller, this fortune teller is not telling them all nonsense about how the child died and whatever and whatever. And they started to mix up their Christianity. Amen. And they started to pop and weave into spiritualism and into God's things. And they, and they speak Jesus. Amen. But entertain the demons and this went on. 
went on for about two, three years until the sun dies. Amen. Not finished yet. The sun dies and they carry on doing the same thing. Now they intensify this walk with the enemy. They intensify the, the, the walk with ancestral worship. They intensify their walk with this modern age sorcery and they carry on and they get deeper and deeper and both of them get terribly sick. They're very sick, bedridden. Now I want to tell you this. This is the family of four. Two children are gone. Two, children, two are left. Amen. As I tell you what happened to the, the family, Amen. The Lord wiped them out. I don't want it to wipe out them. Am I speaking a lie, Hillary? Amen. She knows exactly what I'm speaking about. She wiped, the Lord wiped out the family. Amen. Because are you stronger than He? Are you prepared to take the chance? Or are you ready, Amen, to say, Lord, forgive me? Are we ready to go to the Lord and say, Forgive me for pagan worship? Forgive me for doing things for worshiping idols? Amen. I don't care who told you it is okay. It's my word, my word that I read every day, my Bible, I mean, according to God's word, says that it's an abomination. As long as I'm worshipping idols, it's not of God. I'm here to make a true truth before you today. I'm here to tell you truth. Three weeks ago, I felt the Lord say, but we need to be straight up with the people in church. May the people dissipate, that's fine. But we want you to get into the narrow road. We want to disciple you so you know the truth of God. So today it's not about numbers, it's about the discipleship and what the Lord wants to do in your heart. So I don't care who you are, I don't care what, what belief system that the minute they place an idol before you, amen, it's an abomination to God. Amen, because the Lord God Almighty doesn't want us to worship idols, He wants us to worship Him. The minute you worship the sun, the minute you worship the moon, the minute you worship the ground you walk on, the minute you worship yourself, you're no more worshipping God, you've made an idol of things that is not of God. You start entertaining demons, and Paul says, well, you're like the Gentiles, and you're entertaining the things of the Gentiles, you're heathens, amen. And he says, you're entertaining the things of you. You're entertaining the things that are of the devil. And you're not entertaining the things of God. And he says to him, I want you to know one thing. God is jealous. I want you to know the second thing. You're telling God that you're stronger than him. And I want to tell you, Corinthians, don't do that. God's got you. Amen. But you've got to decide who you want to be. You've got to decide who you want to walk with. What, what you want to do with your life. You've got to decide. Amen. So the Lord says in the journal, he says, I want you to forget that. I don't, I don't want you to forget that, but I don't want you to be part of it. I don't want you to be part of that, that worship. I want you to come before me and do what I'm calling you to do. So the Amalekites, I mean, they could, they could be asked to protect themselves. You see, the things that are happening today happen in the Bible. You choose not to see them. You choose the scriptures that are befitting to you. I mean, you a good, good father. He's a good, good father. But there's some things he don't appreciate. There's some things my good, good father, he doesn't like. Amalekites symbolizes evil. And says to worship symbolizes evil. Amen. Mediums, familiar spirits, witchcraft, new age, ancestral worship, sangomas, astral projection, blood covenants, amen, demonic tattoos, amen, it symbolizes evil. It symbolizes the Amalekites. And God so despised the Amalekites that He took out a king because of the Amalekites. Amen. He took out Saul. Listen, Saul was chosen by God. You've been chosen by God to sit here, but you've got choices to make. So I had a choice to make. Amen. Do I serve the people? Amen. And by serving the people, I serve the Amalekites. Or do I serve God and do exactly what He tells me to do? And only after He realizes that He allowed the people to make a decision to take the spoils, does He realize I've messed up. But He so badly messed up, He didn't, he didn't flatten what the Lord wanted Him to flatten. Amen. And the Amalekites still had, Amen, some leftovers. You see, one of the things you've got to understand is the enemy, amen, is always going to transform himself as an angel of light. But you need to discern according to the word. You've got to discern according to what the Lord is saying to you this morning. You've got to know what is right and wrong. You've got to stop trying to paint the picture. I felt the Lord say, one of the, one of the keys, I mean, when Jesus says, says to you, man, you shall live by the word of God and, and you shall live by every word that comes out of the word of God. And the bread of God, I mean, is the word of God. And when Jesus says this to him, one of the keys I felt the Lord says, when, when Satan leaves out that portion, I mean, it's exactly what the enemy does to us today. I mean, he brings a what if. And you're living your life on a what if. Amen. Somebody asked me a question this week, and something that's really touched me. I mean, how do we know where we are headed for? How do you know? You need to know. I can't know for you. You die tomorrow, your coffin lies in the state. I don't know where you're going. I don't know if you made right with God, or you're sitting here acting like you made right with God, and you're entertaining pagan worship when you go home. 
You're entertaining Amalekites. You're entertaining things that are not of God. I don't know. So I don't know where you're going. Hey Amen. I might want to come with your family, but I ain't going to tell them you're going to heaven because I don't know where you're going. Unless the Lord God Himself tells me so, I ain't going to tell you. Because you need to know who you're entertaining. I don't know. The Lord this, this morning is asking you to choose wisely. Number one, the Lord this morning wants to close some doors in our lives, but we've got to choose what we want to do for the Lord. Listen to this, Leviticus 19.31 Give no regard to mediums and to familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. I'm going to read it again. It says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. What is the Lord saying? He says, the minute you seek after them, you defile by them. The minute you entertain them, you part of them. That's why, that's why Paul said it so amazingly in Corinthians. He says, listen, I mean, when you're partaking with them, you are entertaining demons. You are one with demons. Amen. And how can you partake with demons and partake of the goodness of God? How can you partake of the goodness of God, amen, this morning, amen, and say that you are a child of God, amen, but you're bringing abomination unto God's kingdom? How many people are sick out there because they're entertaining demons? How many people are not delivered, amen, because they're entertaining demons? Somebody put out a, 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 a word, and I don't know if it was on Facebook or where, and saying, how many anointed of God are demonized? Wow, think about that. How many anointed men and women of God are demonized? Because they're chasing the flesh, they're chasing memory, they're chasing things that are not of God. They're anointed men of God, but they've been demonized by the enemy. And that's what the enemy wants. If he can demonize you, he's got traction over you. Amen. Because you've been defiled before God. How can you be a vessel of honor sanctified by God for God to accomplish what God's called you to accomplish if you've been demonized? If you're entertaining Amalekites, if you're entertaining New World Order, if you're entertaining modern worship, if you're entertaining familiar spirits. Amen. Do you know what familiar spirits is? How many of you go home? You come back worse than the day you went. Yeah. Come on. Because you're entertaining familiar spirits. You get back and say, I don't know why I'm detached from God. I don't know why I'm getting headaches, Pastor. I don't know why I'm dreaming about snakes, Pastor. I don't know why, Pastor. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm breaking a sweat. I feel like I'm getting beaten at night. And the question is, you went home and you entertained familiar spirits. You said you're Christian. You didn't act like a Christian. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? This is a hard word, but it's a word of deliverance. It's a word of restoration, a word of healing this morning. How many of us are entertaining those women? But Jesus, Jesus Christ came that we may be set free. And as people say, but I'm not set free, Pastor. And I'm saying, who are you entertaining? Because if you don't have freedom, amen, there's a reason. Yeah. Because the word of God is alive and it's sharp within a double-edged sword. And he said, I came yeah. to set captives free. And if you're in captivity, you put yourself there. You see, one of the things that this morning as we were worshiping, I felt the Lord saying, shackles are going to be broken this morning. Amen. Amen. But do you choose? What did Paul do? What did they do when shackles got broken? He did exactly what Moses did. They started worshiping. Their freedom was dependent on their worship. Their freedom was dependent on who they worship. They didn't worship the day of hell. They didn't worship the chains. They didn't worship the child of tribulation. They didn't worship their circumstance. Amen. They started worshiping God. They started singing hymns, they're praising God, and when his shackles started to break. As Moses said, war, and when his men are fighting the war, his greatest battle, and when was in worship. He didn't need to be on the wall, on, 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 on the battlefield. All he needed to do was be worshiping before God. And he needed men on each other's side to lift up his hands. Do you know why ministries are falling today? Because nobody's got nobody. Nobody's got nobody. Everybody's doing nothing, nobody's getting anybody. Because everybody wants to be number one. It's crowded up there. Nobody wants to follow. I mean, everybody wants to be in the lead. Same as Moses, if they didn't hold up his hands, the Ammonites would have prevailed. Why? Because the enemy specializes in division. The greatest thing that's happening today, the Lord's teaching you, the greatest division that is in your life. If you charge with pagan worship and you're choosing God, it's going to bring division. And our God is just going to step back and say, when you're ready to choose me, I'm ready to do what needs to be done. Amen. Amen. Our God... He's not a God that wants to be prostituted. Do you know what is a prostitute? Amen. He doesn't want you to come and take him when you need him. Amen. Defile him, throw him away, and spit him when you don't. So he says, I'm going to step back because you want to prostitute me. You want to prostitute me. You want to defile me. And I'm God. I'm creator of heaven and earth. And that Satan that you entertain, I created him. You want to prostitute me? The creator? You want to prostitute me? They sent my only begotten son to set you free? You want to prostitute me? 
God says back, Lord says back and says, when you're ready, amen, I am more willing, amen. I'm more willing than you are to ask. I'm more willing to set you free, amen, than what you're ready to say. I was sitting the other day, I was speaking to a great man of God, and he said to me, I'm so hurt within my, my inner man. People are not rushing to break the door down to come to church. Why? Amen? Because they're still in between a rock and a hard place. He said, Pastor, when you want to come, you don't even have to send me a message. You don't have to do anything. Just let me know you're coming. Don't even have to, don't even have to sign up. I said, where do I go? And you know, when you go on the internet and you sign up to come, he said, you don't even have to do that. Just send me a WhatsApp. I'll make a way. You don't even have to do that because people are not breaking the door down to come into church. And you know what the Lord's been telling me? We need to start discipling you. You that are here, look around. The Lord wants to disciple you. He wants to prepare you for great things. But today, He wants to tell you, stop prostituting yourself. Because you are bringing calamity upon your own household. Many of you, amen, are bringing curses upon your own children. Upon your own, your children's children. You're bringing the curse. Many of you have prostituted not only yourselves, you've prostituted your children. And you have one, have one day you can go before the Lord God Almighty, cry out ever Father and say, Lord, sorry for prostituting you. Sorry for being an abomination. You are a jealous God and I love that about Daddy. He's a, he's a jealous Daddy. That's good. Why is he jealous? Why is he jealous? Because he loves you. He loves you. That's why he's jealous. He doesn't want to share you. He wants all of you. In the minute you want him to share, God steps back and said, that's not what I sent my only son for. I sent my only son that you may be set free. That you may be set free from iniquity. Set free from pagan worship. Set free from the things that is not of God. You see my brother Justin? That man that arrived here yesterday and started speaking to me about where we've come from. Reminded me, amen, of what the Lord's done. Come on, that man reminded me. He said to me, Pastor, I, I've come. I mean, I, I was part of New Age worship. I thought I was doing God's work. And I didn't even realize I was entertaining demons. I was doing the devil's work. And it reminded me of where I've come from, what I've been through, amen, and that how the Lord's delivered me. But you know what the greatest deliverance is? Is when you make right with God and you know, amen, that when you come before the Lord, you've decided that I'm not only going to follow God, but I'm done with the past. I'm stepping into the future. Because the Word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It does separate both from me, but I've got to choose the Word. And not only speak it, I've got to live it. If you woke up this morning and you said to me, please pray. My face is putting on the one side. I feel like I'm going to have a stroke. I said, Lord, what's going on? Sunday morning ain't going to happen. Put my hands around, put my hand on the face, and we started to pray vigorously. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And when I could sense the enemy's attack just over my mouth, I could sense the enemy's attack, and I started putting down strongholds. I knew there's something special for you today. There's something special for you today because we weren't supposed to be here. Supposed to be rushing on my wife to hospital and saying to one of the pastors, can you share? You can't make it. But I refused. I refused. She refused. She said, this time I'm not even scared. This time we got this. This time we're putting down that stronghold. This time we're going to worship. This time we're showing up to church. God is doing something. Say my office opened the word and I said, Lord, I'm going to be speaking this morning. I'm going to be speaking that tomorrow's too late. The Lord said, put that away. Go to Psalms 91. I want my people to be delivered and set free from the enemy. You know why we got dominion over the enemy in our household? Because we don't entertain him. Wow. He's got no rights in my house. Yes. I mean, he's got no visitation rights. I mean, he doesn't have a complimentary ticket. Wow. I mean, I've never given him a ticket of entertaining him and saying, well, you come whenever you want to. He's got no ticket. My house is covered by the blood of Jesus. I mean, my house will worship the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. I mean, it's been set free for His name's sake, for His kingdom come. We've been delivered so we can pull down strongholds. Many of you are battling and fighting and saying, we battle to pull down strongholds. The, the battle's intense, amen. And every time I lose, every time I look back, or every time I'm not focused on the Lord God, I'm getting wiped out and the Lord is saying, because you prostituted yourself and we want to close doors today. I said earlier, many of you are thinking you are serving God and some of you raised your hands and I asked you, listen, do you still feel the pulling and pushing on them and you raised your hands? Amen. And the Lord said, the, the reason why the enemy is pulling on you is because there's a door that has been opened. There's a door that has been opened in your life. Leviticus 26 to 8. And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits, listen to the word, underline it. To prostitute himself with them. I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. Amen. I'm going to stop there before I carry on. And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them. 
I will sacrifice against that person and cut him off from his people. Right. The key word is prostitute yourself. Amen. One of the things that the Lord has used me mightily for in is soul ties. Is breaking soul ties. Amen. Emotional side ties, sexual soul ties. I've never in my wildest dream, I thought every now and then the Lord gives you a key. Amen. And you respect that key because that's a revelation of God from heaven. Amen. That's the wisdom of God. And the key that the Lord has given me today is there is paid in soul ties. Amen. There's ancestral soul ties upon the nation. And because there's no soul ties, there's an open door. Let me help you before we go further. So, in the Word of God, it says, We two shall become one. When a husband and a wife find each other. Listen, before I even carry on, I want you to look around. Just look around. I'm going to release the Word over the church. You can you see this space? Very soon, there's going to be no space in this building. I want to let you hear it. And not because the Lord's going to pull up chairs. There's a deliverance coming upon the African nation. Did you hear me this morning? There's a deliverance coming upon this African nation. Amen. Amen. Right. Let me go back now. Now we can back, go back to where the Lord is speaking to me. Amen. So, two shall become one. When you get married with your wife, you become one. Amen. You become united. In one flesh. Amen. Uncle Patrick answers. Amen. Uncle Irene and Uncle Irene. Uncle answers Uncle Patrick. There's a unity. Uncle Patrick goes to work. He's not feeling well. Auntie Irene senses something's wrong. She'll phone Uncle Patrick. Are you okay? You've got a chest problem. I'm not feeling well. Come home. Two shall become one. Amen. It's called soul time. Amen. Soul time. Two become one. Jesus said, I hate divorce. Because you can be divorced. The paper doesn't separate soul ties. It doesn't break soul ties. Amen. Rani, you can come to the front and pray. I don't know why. I'm just I'm looking at you. I need you to come and pray in front. Eno, come pray. I mean, where my other prayer warriors, Pastor Stanley, come pray. Pastor Nana, can you just put seats on the sides here? I mean, I'm not touching anybody today. Today you're going to come concentrate yourself before the Lord. We're going to just put some chairs there, some chairs there. I mean, Pastor Nigel. I mean, I know Pastor Stanley, it was difficult to get you this morning. I know the Lord said that to me. I mean, there's a reason we're going to pray. So one pastor on each side. I mean, and then one, uh, I want the, the, the ladies, my, my intercessors, one on each side, Jack as well. Just want you to come pray. I mean, the Lord's going to do something this morning. Okay? So to become one, so where the two become one, it's called the soul pie. It's a godly soul pie. Right, so the enemy is clever. The enemy comes to rob, steal, and destroy. So what is his speciality? What does he need to do in your life? How does he get traction in your life? So now a soul pie is an open door. If there's a good soul pie, there's a bad soul pie. So now a soul pie is an open door. So if I open the door there, people can come in and out. Okay? If I lock the door, they need to break the door down to get in. Amen. So that's a soul tie. So you get a good soul tie. So you get married for the first time. You, you have sex together. Oh, that's an amazing thing. That's, that's now a heavenly soul tie. Two become one. I mean, you know me. I know you. I mean, when I'm feeling bad, you can feel it. When you're feeling down, I can feel it. And that's, that's a godly soul tie. It's an open door. The enemy knows about it. So it open doors. He specializes in it. That's why sexual immorality is number one on his list. Because he uses that for open door. So if he gets an open door, he's got traction. And what is an open door? It's, an enti- it's a place that he can transfer demons from one side to the other side. Amen. And once he's got the open door, you don't know how to close it. You don't have the ability to close it because you don't know that it exists. Make sense? So some people get divorced, get another wife. Amen. Now and then they still think about the husband. They're sleeping with a new husband, but they still think of the old husband. And they don't know why. Amen. Because it's a door that's been opened. Amen. Now it's no more a godly soul tie. Now it's a demonic soul tie because we got divorced. Divorce is not the plan of God. But hang on, the Lord will, he will see us through. He will forgive us. But we don't know that we've got to close this door. Amen. So the door's open. And while that door's open, the enemy gains traction. How many of you women in this house this morning, amen, when you get a boyfriend, it always just goes bad. You think that's the man for me? I want to get married. That's the man I'm going to marry. And the minute you do that, it just goes haywire. You start arguing, you start despising this man, you start hating him. You start getting feelings that are not godly. Come on, how many? How many? Come on! You, you never get delivered from things that you don't admit. Amen? Because it's an open door. So the minute, if the minute there's something that's going to have dominion over you, the enemy doesn't want that dominion to be taken away from you. So he intensifies the, the, he intensifies the attack. Why? Because he's got the open door. You've given him the rights. So an open door is the rights. And the revelation says God opens and He closes doors. Amen. 
God opens and closes doors. And this morning, He's saying to me, if you prostituted yourself, it means you've slept with the devil. Come on, I didn't write the Bible. Your word, the word, your Bible does not say prostitute. I said I want you to underline the word. Because prostitute means, amen, I've slept with the enemy. And if I've slept with him, I've opened the door. Now, you say, Pastor, but I'm being saved, okay? Some of us have been saved, we came to the Lord, we saved. And the minute we get saved, boom, He cleans us. He sanctifies us from the crown of to the corner of our feet. We've been saved, we've been set free, we've been set apart. Listen, three things the Lord said to me when I got saved. He said, number one, amen? If you sleep around, the enemy's got changed, and you'll never be the man of God I want you to be. Amen? I watch it. Number one. Number two, if you go back to pagan worship, you'll never be the man that, that I want you to be. Number three, amen, if you don't give up the thing you worship, amen, you'll never be able to worship me. Three things. He said, those are the three keys I'm giving you, my son. If you follow those three keys, I'll use you. I'll use you in places that you never ask, think, or imagine. I'll set you before kings, and I'll use you to do things that you'll never dream about in your life. But key fact number one, amen, one week later, three prostitutes came and attacked them. And when they came, the Lord said to me, open your eyes. And when I looked, three prostitutes, must have been about 16 years old, amen, and I started laughing. And the Lord said, I told you, the attack is imminent. Amen. Number one. Number two, amen, the greatest business that I could ever think of asking imagine, amen, was thrown at me. The same thing the Lord said, I want you, that is key, give up the thing that you worship. Amen. Give that up. You worship business. You're good at it, but you don't worship it. Gifting and worship is two different things. So I don't want you to do that. So I don't want you to mess around. You serve one wife, you take care of her, and you never do the wrong things. Amen. You're a man after one wife's heart. Don't look around, you don't lust, you don't fornicate. Number two, don't worship things that are not of God. I mean, what was the other one? See if you're not paying attention. What's the other one? Sorry? Pagan worship. He says, you go back to pagan worship, my son. And you want to defile your life, you'll defile your family's life. Amen. But I can smell Satan from a distance. You know, they say, it's only I look. I can smell him. When I woke up this morning, and we were just sitting in chat, and you know, everything was fine. We were fine, and we were just having a back chat. Nothing was fine. And two seconds later, she said, hang on, my face is pulling. Pulling terribly, my cheeks pulling. I feel, and you know, where's my wife? My wife's her face. That's you mess with her face, she's going to run into the mirror. She didn't get up, and we started trying to smell, I mean, the sulfur. I mean, the, the, this attack is intensified. But I choose God always. He's my deliverer, He's my healing. And then yesterday I said to the men, we're no more sick trying to get into the water. I mean, we are angels that are stirred in the water. And the Lord is reminding me, I said, you're not sick getting in the water. You are angels stirring the water, telling him to leave. It doesn't belong here. Amen. We prayed, got up, and I went to prepare the word. Amen. But when we prostitute ourselves, we open the door. You've slept with the enemy. Amen. So we got saved, you got saved, you got sanctified, you got clean. Cool. You've been set free. But some of you have gone back to pagan worship. Some of you went back to familiar spirits. Some of you had a pain you couldn't deal with, so you went to the witch doctor because it's not happening in church. Amen. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prepared to work for church. Some of you, your granny phoned and said, I don't know, I'm now in your mind, I'm not in your mind, I'm not in your mind, I'm not in your mind. Am I speaking to anybody in this house this morning? Come home, don't worry. Granny knows what you're going through, amen? Because Granny is a sun bomb herself. Granny, the Granny gave you to the sun bombs as a young age. But no, no, you don't smell what's going on. It's, it's normal. That's what the Africans do. And the sad thing is, us Africans are never delivered of the things we do because it's, it's okay, that's what we do. And then we're like, soul, that's okay. I didn't take this stuff. I mean, my people did. And the Lord said, no, 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 soul, I told you what to do. not tell your people. You are the commander of your people. When you get saved, you command over yourself. Amen. Stop blaming situations, circumstances for your bad decisions. You've been set free and saved by God. And the Lord has said to me, many of you, and many are entertaining demons. And this morning, the Lord wants to close the door. He wants you to close the door once more. Some of you are thinking, you keep on wanting to go back. You keep on wanting to go back. You keep on wanting to go back. You keep on getting green drawn to the abomination of the past. And it's because the door is open and the Lord wants to close the door. I mean, he wants to close that door this morning. I mean, because we've been prostituted. We've slept with the enemy over and over and over again. And because we've slept with the enemy, we virtually opened the door and said, devil, have your way. Do whatever you want to do. 
you cry out to God and say, Lord, I pray, I come to church, but nothing's happening. I'm not getting delivered from certain things. I'm not getting set free from certain things. And you know what the problem is? We serve a God that's the judge, and He judges us accordingly. He sent Jesus Christ, I mean, that He's a wonderful counselor. He's an advocate. I mean, he doesn't, only, he doesn't only counsel law, but He specializes in law. Why did the Lord send us Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor and an advocate? He does both of them. Amen. Because He makes intercession on our behalf. But every now and then we make it difficult for Him to intercede on our behalf. Because God is saying, Jesus, you're interceding. I mean, you're interceding for so and so. But there's nothing I can do. There's an open door. And I judge accordingly. I'm a good, good God. I'm a good Father. And I'm a gracious Father. And I judge everybody accordingly. Amen. But they've opened the door. And the enemy is defiling. And the enemy is standing on them. And the enemy is there's an abomination upon Africa. I mean, they say Africa is a Christian nation. It's going to become a Christian nation. They say the remnant of God is going to start in Africa. And I believe it. Because this teaching today, I mean, I would have done it with people on one one I would have never done it in front of a whole church. I wouldn't have done it in Facebook Live. I would have not have done it unless the Lord said, I want you to go and teach them. I want you to tell them about this. And I specialize in soul ties. I, the Lord has been using me mightily in soul ties, but I never knew there was a prostitution, a soul tie, I mean, of demonic worship. Then when we, when we entertain demonic worship, when we entertain things that are not of God, you just open the door, you crack the door open, and the enemy is very quick to use that door. And you say, but, but pastor, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Yes, it's fine. He doesn't attack you unless he needs to attack you. He doesn't pull you down. So I said to you, how many of you, when you get a boyfriend, you say, well, that's the one I'm going to marry. I mean, the day you start planning to marry him, everything goes by bad because the enemy says, no, no, you belong to me. I mean, nothing else has got dominion over me. That door's open and I've got legality over you. I've got rights over you. And then you can do what you want. You can pray like you want. You can jump up and down as you want. Come into repentance. The scripture is as follows as we go forth. And we're going to come into a close. And I asked the, 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 the pastors and the intercessors to pray because I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to lay hands on you. I'm going to do nothing with you this morning. Those that want to consecrate themselves to God are going to come and consecrate themselves upon this land. I mean, this is the altar of God. Pastor Stanley, you said it yesterday when we took this place. I mean, it was a place of pagan worship. This place stank. I could smell the devil. I could smell the prostitution. I could smell it. But the day that the Lord took over and He kicked them out of here, Pastor Stanley, the presence of God has rested upon this building every single day. Every day. And they said to me yesterday when I was sitting there, they said, I want you to intensify the things that you're doing in this building. Because I didn't set this building apart just for a Sunday meeting. I want to do more things in this place. Because my presence is there. This is the house of prayer for all nations. And I want nations to be set free. I want people to be set free from pagan worship. So some of you are going to come here. I don't know who you are. I don't, I don't, and listen, as you're sitting there, I know some of you are pulling and pushing within you. And the word of God says that in Hebrews. Amen. That is a discerner. Amen. Within you. And I want you to say, I'm going to do what the Lord is praying for. I want to be set free. I want to be the person that God intends for me. I want to run my race with endurance. I want to be like Paul. I want to have my encounter and I don't want to turn back. I've had enough of the stink in my life. I've had enough of the things that are not of God. I am set free. I am a Christian nation. And Christianity does not serve ancestral worship. We are set apart. We're different. Am I wrong? You know, we're different. When we go home, they look at us different. They treat us different. My mother can't stand the sight of me. I mean, because I don't entertain the things she entertains. And by the way, my mother is a spiritualist. She entertains demons. That's what she does. Am I wrong, Hillary? So we cannot see eye to eye. Why? Because I'm different. I've chosen my road. I was set apart like some of you. Amen? To entertain the enemy. I wasn't supposed to be a pastor. Somewhere in my life, I was supposed to be a witch doctor. The thing that opposes God. So today I can speak to you about these things. Because I've been anointed and appointed by God to speak the things that I've been through. Amen. So you're going to come up here and you're going to say, Pastor, I'm going to dedicate myself back to God. I'm going to consecrate. Even think it says this. 27 says, consecrate yourself therefore and be holy for I am the Lord your God. And you shall keep my statements and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Today I want you to consecrate yourself. Are you sitting there? I want something. I want them to play a song at the back there. Amen. I need an encounter. I want to play very softly. I mean, I want the lights off. I just want the dimmers on. We don't want to see anybody. Amen. But the word consecrate means set yourself apart. You've been saved. The Lord said, I want you to set yourself apart. Number one, we want you to come to repent. So if you're coming up, I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to say, Lord, forgive me. Number one key to closing the door is forgiveness. 
Number one, forgiveness means realization of the things I've done that is not pleasing to God. It's repentance. And when I repent, God's going to forgive me. Number one, that door's going to be true. Some of you are going to be healed and some of you are going to be transformed. Amen. Some of you are going to leave here like new vessels. No more cracked systems. The Bible speaks about cracked systems. Why cracked systems? Because we are cracked by pagan worship. We're leaking the word of God. We're leaking the spirit of God. Why do we leak? Because we've cracked ourselves. Why have we cracked ourselves? Because we're entertaining pagan worship. We're entertaining the Nemalakites. We're entertaining ancestral worship. We're entertaining modern age. We're entertaining addiction. We're entertaining drug abuse. We're entertaining prostitution. We're entertaining sleeping around. And our systems have been cracked. And the Lord is saying, some of you, when you consecrate yourself, when you set yourself aside this morning, I am going to heal you. If you're at home, I want you to move whatever's in front of you. I want you to go on your knees. I mean, if you are here, I mean, I want you those that want to consecrate themselves. They want to come before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness. I will close the door in Jesus' name. But you are going to ask God for forgiveness. You're going to come here. First of all, you're going to ask for forgiveness. Number two, as you are coming here, you set yourself apart. And once you set yourself apart, then we're going to close the door. And it only happens when you come here. If you're sitting down there, there's nothing I can do for you. Because you've got to shame the devil this morning. You've got to shame the things that are not of God this morning. You've got to shame them. Amen. You've got to shame them in Jesus' name. So I'm going to, I'm going to play the song, Father, I pray to you in Jesus' name. Lord, as we shame the enemy, Father God, as we prostitute ourselves today, Father God, we're going to come forth, many of us today, and say, forgive me for prostituting myself. Forgive me for opening doors today, Father God. And today I pray, Lord, as they come forth, come on, there's some of you that are so scared to come. And then the Lord is saying, I want you to come to the consecrate yourself. Set yourself, just by coming forth, you are setting yourself free from pagan worship. And I want to tell you, you're coming for us. You're, going, you're not going back anymore. There's no going back in Jesus' name. No going back in the name of Jesus. You can come out. You don't have to hold back. You come back. If you pay for the Hinduism and you need to take cutting the crown again, and every now and then you get the hope of it, every now and then you get this, the fear of the God, and just bring it down to these guys. If, if you get that feeling, that feeling, amen. If you get that feeling of the company, the sense of getting the company, I want you to come to the front. We want to break this this morning. We want to break it. I want you to break it in Jesus' name. I told you I'm not going to touch you this morning. I'm not going to put my hand upon you this morning. Amen. As you come so to the front, you are consecrating yourself. You are setting yourself aside in Jesus' name. And as you set yourself aside, you are telling the Lord God Almighty, Lord, I'm setting myself apart for your name's sake. We can drop the Lord into the or lift me up, or you can lift me up. Lift me up next to you, lift me up next to Amen. Consecrate yourself, the Lord is saying this morning. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself aside. Set yourself apart. That's what I said. You get a consecrate. You're going to come up to the altar of God and say, I'm separating myself from pagan worship. I don't serve ancestors anymore. I don't need a son Dorma to tell me anything. I don't need new age. I don't need addiction. This is a day of deliverance in Jesus' name. There's such a presence of God right here, right now. God is speaking to you. And as you're consecrating yourself, you sing yourself aside and you say, Lord, yeah, I am. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, I pray. As they raise their hands up, screaming out, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me for ancestral worship. Forgive me for idolatry. Forgive me for entertaining familiar spirits. Forgive me for witchcraft. Forgive me for new age worship. Forgive me, Father God, for entertaining astral projection. Forgive me. If you turn into a snake in this place, you tell the Lord, forgive me. I'm never going to turn into anything else. I'm a child of God. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me for entertaining some moments. Forgive me. Set me free. Forgive me for it's your projection this morning. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me for blood covenants. Where I make covenants under demons. Where, Lord, I've been cut. Where they put chicken blood over me. Lord, where I've been entertaining demons. Where I've made facts. When the enemy, forgive me. For the covenant, forgive me, Jesus. 
I want you to go home, share what the Lord's doing. Share wherever you go, share the testimony. Put it on wherever you go, put it on the sites, whatever. Put it on Facebook. Let them know the testimony of what God's done to them. I stand here as a man of God and I've been set free from what you've been set free. You know? And I know what the freedom's like, but I'm a testimony of God. You are a testimony of God. Share your testimony. Amen. Seal the deal with your testimony. Amen. We are overcome the devour by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. May God bless you and strengthen you. May His light shine upon you. May you run and not grow weary in Jesus' name. If the Lord here today, let me pray, pronounce the benediction. Father, I first want to thank you for what you've done. Father, I am in awe of your presence. I am in awe of the goodness of God. And I thank you, Father, today. I woke up this morning and said, Lord, I want it to be simple. I want to come home and I want to rest. And you said to me, it's not going to be your way, son. It's always going to be my way. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for always agitating me, Lord, and pushing me, Father. The mile that I cannot go, knowing that it's your dunamis power that carries me. I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for deliverance. I want to thank you for healing. But, Father, most of all, Father God, I want to thank you for entrusting me with a key this morning. The key that we prostituted ourselves to the enemy and we opened a door that I never knew existed, Father. I thank you for that, Father. And I pray that this word, Father, will touch many lives, Father God. That many will be restored and healed. Many doors will be closed where we prostituted themselves to the enemy. Father, I thank you. Your goodness and your mercy endures forever, Lord. Many people read the word, Father God, and they never appreciate the, the truth and the fullness of, and the joy of the word that your goodness endure is forever. And ever and ever and ever. It never stops enduring. And I want to thank you for that. Father. I want to give you glory. I want to give you praise. I want to give you honor. Lord, I break out with my heart of thanksgiving. And I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that Africa is going to meet you on your terms. Thank you that Africa is going to see deliverance in places that never asked him to imagine. Thank you, Lord, that our African nation are not going to be a nation that have five husbands or, or five wives, but they're going to be true to each other because you are delivering them, Father God, from that iniquity, from that lie of the Amalekites, Father. You are delivering from it, and we want to say thank you. That there will be men and women, Father God, that will see the trueness of unity in matrimony. So, Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you glory. We want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. Now, may the love of the Lord, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, Lord, just saying something. Pastor Stanley, Pastor Nigel, just anoint everybody before I leave you still. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. That's what the Lord said. Just anoint all of them. Actually, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's just an anointing. Just seal them with, with the, 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 the oil of gladness. I just love the Lord saying that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just seal the oil of gladness. Every single one. We are just going to see you. We are going to go down. Is there any sense? We are going to seal the door first with the blood of the Lamb. And then we get sealed with the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The important thing not to miss the Lord is to seek you with the blood of the Lamb. If you've been, if you've been anointed, stand up and you know you've been anointed, then I'll just close up and pray. I mean, are we blessed this morning? Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Are we blessed? And then it's such a man who played the Lord's life and blessed. Anyone. Don't go sit now. Don't ask for addiction and we'll go once. Just stand up so the pastors know you've been anointed. Amen. So they know that you've been anointed. Thank you. Thank you. Sealed it, Father God, with the oil gang that's been sealed with the blood of the name. They've been sealed, Father God. And they shall not be like God's but in fact the only one. Father God, there will never be of that nation that is no poor switch rise. And every pull that's been thrown at the throne to them from the word of God, they'll receive it. They'll grab hold of it and they'll run with it, Father God. And it will gain momentum. And the word of God shall never return void in all of their lives. It shall be accomplished by God wants to accomplish. Amen. All of you today. Many of you. Amen. If everybody's in one time, I want to just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now the love of the Lord and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each and every one of you. May the goodness of God be your testimony. And may the, the revelation of this word be your testimony wherever you go. May the Lord strengthen you, may He keep you. I pray that He see you with the blood of Jesus, that you will never run and go weary. You will run and you will raise up on eagles with weariness will never be your portion. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Amen.